Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be discussing about roads in Singapore. Particularly, a type of road which I dislike. This type of road is a street road hybrid, also known as a strode. This is a term by Strong Towns which focuses on the development of North American cities. However, the term strode seems to hold some presence in Singapore. It's same same, but different. But before we get to strokes, we first have to understand the differences between a street and a road. Streets are built for the economy. They are complex environments bustling with commercial activities. In these places, speeds are kept low and are seen as destination points. Traffic calming is usually installed to force drivers to slow down. Buildings line both sides of the street, making it easy to walk around, visiting shops and going about daily activities. There are also many side streets branching out from a street for local access. This is safe because the differences in speed are kept minimal. Roads on the other hand are built mainly with the purpose of moving people from A to B, also known as a thoroughfare. This demands higher speeds and as such, they are designed to be forgiving to drivers. This is made possible by the usage of white lanes similar to expressways. Development along a road is minimal and entrance and exit points are kept limited. Stop points are far and few to maintain high speeds of travelling. Paths for walking and cycling are kept physically separated from the road by grass verges. This is safe because of the low number of conflict points. And if there are shops along the way, they can be accessed by the side street that runs parallel to the main road, but not directly from the main road. Both streets and roads are important. However, problems arise when planners attempt to merge the function of a street with the design of a road. This results in what strong towns call a strode. This practice is popular in the 1980s with the rise of Singapore's economy. People then having increased income buy cars to get around the island. Expressways were built and lanes were added to streets to handle higher volumes of motor traffic. Cycling paths previously present were bulldozed by road lanes. Due to the inconveniences that come with renaming a right-of-way, the names remain unchanged. This makes it hard to determine the function of a passage solely based on its name. And it's maybe how we end up with a street and a road, both being a thoroughfare, such as the new Yutongsen Bridge strode. Strodes are bad. Let me explain. To fulfill the purpose of being a thoroughfare, strodes are built with white lanes that are forgiving to drivers at high speeds. Squeezing multiple white lanes through traditional developments results in little space for walking. I mean, I mistook this as an expressway at first glance. The five footways under shop houses are traditionally built to different standards in the past, resulting in multiple grade changes when walking along. Leveled footpaths outside the shop houses are present, but their narrow width and presence of obstacles in the way make them unpleasant to walk on. And do you really think that this sign will actually make drivers slow down? Uh... Bus connections are available. However, several bus stops along the strode are wheelchair inaccessible. And even if they are, the surrounding area makes getting around a pain in the ass. However, unlike a road, commercial activity is bustling along both sides of the passage. The need for commercial vehicles to unload materials is fulfilled by the high number of side streets branching out from the strode, or lorongs as they are called here. Due to the high speed limit set, turning radiuses into lorongs are built wide to minimize disruption to the flow of motor traffic on the strode. The lack of continuous footpaths accompanied with long crossing distances makes walking even more unpleasant. Bus lanes may be present along a strode, but frequent breaks that allow drivers to turn into side streets reduces the speed of buses. Because there's so much activity along a strode, drivers need to constantly slow down 
to avoid colliding into each other. And even if one intends to overtake on the right lane, it cannot be done so quickly, as on-street parking is on both sides of the street. One has to look out for people coming out from their cars and merging in and out from side streets. All this increases complexity and hence the chance of an accident occurring. Since the mixing of high and low speeds is dangerous, fences are installed so people can't cross the street except at designated traffic lights. These signals feel too spaced out when walking, but too close together when driving. Here, they are programmed to create green waves so that drivers have to stop less, and if you're lucky, walking. Not to forget, since buses here aren't equipped with transponders, they often do not reap the benefits of a green wave and get stuck. The only time they are really effective though, is past midnight when there is little traffic. Due to the nature of higher speeds, green phases for our vehicles need to be long, which results in long wait times for people walking, wanting to cross the street. These times could be as long as up to 90 seconds. Cycling on the street is also not ideal. Footpaths are far too narrow to be conducive for cycling, and bicycle lanes aren't present due to the lame excuse of no space. Being dumped into the bus lane results in bike-bus conflicts since speed patterns are vastly different. In places where buses operate on skip-stop sectors, such as Yutong Sen Street, Things get even worse since buses too need to merge in and out of lanes. And since most people cycling along streets do so for fitness or out of desperation, little to nothing is being done to improve safety. All these factors make streets inefficient. The terrible walkability makes them suck at being a street, and since people also can't get from A to B quickly, they suck at being a road. Furthermore, despite the limited number of streets in Singapore, they account for 20% of road black spot locations. Despite their visual similarities, one big difference from desolate North American streets though is the fact that people actually want to visit them. Shophouses built in the past century are still bustling with activities, especially in cultural districts. Along a stretch at Geylang Road, one could find a hardware store a convenience store, a bicycle store, and even a durian stall, all within 5 minutes of walking. At Little India, there are many small local businesses, just a short walk from Teka Market. Shop houses like these are no longer built in newer districts, and these traditional developments carry much heritage value in Singapore. How good it will be if these places are made more accessible to people. Fortunately, streets can be made better by transforming them into either a road or a street. But since we can't change the location of historical buildings, usually the better option is to convert them to streets. Streets can be converted to streets by reducing vehicle speed and making shared spaces. This could be achieved by reducing the number of road lanes, shrinking wide ones down to 3 meters, and widening the horribly narrow footpaths. Vehicular traffic may still be permitted to enter the street, but traffic calming measures present will deter people from using it as a thoroughfare. On-street parking may still be present as well, but limited to vehicles for essential purposes such as delivery vans and company vehicles. Cycling paths can be made through the street and be used as a thoroughfare. This creates a separate grid for cycling and driving, reducing the number of opportunities for conflicts. Car parking lots can be replaced with bicycle parking, and since one car lot can fit 12 parked bicycles, the number of people able to visit the area will increase over time. Given that vehicular traffic and speed are kept to low volumes, traffic lights and green fences can then be removed, making walking and cycling way more pleasant. The lower volumes of traffic means that buses will also be able to operate more efficiently with reduced need of having to slow down for vehicles turning to side streets. Above all, these changes make horrible streets easily accessible by people regardless of their mobility status. 
Hello, so this is my first video on YouTube and to all of you out there watching it, uh, I'm really thankful for your support. If you'd like to see more videos about Singapore's transport and urban planning, please consider subscribing to my channel. My name is Tae Siu Tai and I thank you for watching my video.